Now let's go back and see how this exercise played out for the group. Okay, it's now 1500. The temperature is 94 degrees. The relative humidity is 18 percent. Winds have shifted out of the northwest at 15 miles an hour and the fire has grown to four acres. The transition between the new Type 4 IC and Christina is now complete and dispatch is calling the new Type 4 IC wanting a status update. Dispatch, Squid IC. Squid IC, dispatch. I want to give you a status update. Ready to copy? We're ready. Now we've just experienced a wind shift. Uh, wind has shifted out of the northwest and this is pushing the fire up towards the subdivision. Um, we're continuing with our flanking action along the, the south and west uh, side of the fire, but fire is getting ahead of us. Break. We've got two engines deployed in the subdivision, and the report from them is uh, they've got good defensible space and think they can protect the structures. However, this fire is starting to grow. Our, our intention right now is just to keep the fire out of the subdivision, and meanwhile, the fire is continuing to grow. Are there any additional resources available? Uh, we can check on that for you and let you know as soon as possible. Yeah, copy that. Um, what I'd like to try to order up is some kind of air support, either a, a medium helicopter with a bucket or an air tanker or even a seat, and then also a, a couple additional hand crews if we could. Copy. Copy that. Would you like air attack along with that? Yeah, if we have air attack available, that'd be good in case this fire gets over the ridge and we can't see it. Also, uh, I'd like to maybe uh, put a, a request in for a IC Type 3. Uh, it looks like this is starting to grow beyond our capabilities and we'd possibly be going through the night on this. Copy? Dispatch copies. Uh, last thing I'd like to request is a spot weather forecast and if you can get that back to me as soon as possible that'll help us with our plans for the rest of the evening. Okay, so let me run through this again. You want a spot weather forecast, a Type 3 IC, air attack with air tankers and or helicopters with buckets. Yeah, if you can get back to me as soon as you can on the availability of those, I'd appreciate it. And also you said two Type 2 crews. Uh, correct. And uh, for the meanwhile, what we're trying to do is just keep the fire out of the subdivision. Uh, we think we'll have good success with that, but uh, the wind is starting to pick up, the humidities have dropped, and the fire behavior has definitely increased. Dispatch copies. We'll check on the status of your resources and let you know. Thank you, Dispatch. Squid IC clear. At this point, we'll end the scenario and begin the after action review. Sand tables are not only a good training tool, they also serve as a good platform to conduct after action reviews. Let's go back to the exercise and listen to a segment of the chainsaw AAR that was done on this incident. A chainsaw AAR is slightly different than the one listed in your IRPG and usually done when you're limited on time. You can read more about chainsaw AARs on the leadership website. Okay, I'd like you to facilitate an AAR with your crew at this time. And if you use the reference list in the uh, IRPG, that might help you out. Okay, if everybody can turn to page 17 of your IRPG. We're going to do an AAR. And instead of just me talking through most of it, I'm going to go ahead and do a chainsaw. And we're going to start over here. And just basically um, tell me what, what you saw on the fire. You know, go from what was planned, what you actually saw, and why you think it happened. And we'll just start a conversation. Feel free to chime in whenever you guys need to. And well. When we flew over in the air, I thought this was going to be a, a pretty easy fire. I, I saw the houses and that was some concern, but you know, the fire was in grass, it burned under the pines, it wasn't doing a whole lot when, when we flew over. And of course, from the air, you know, it looked real easy. It looked like it was going to be a, a piece of cake. Um, so, uh, and then, you know, your plan was good to get down the bottom of it and, and start working. So I felt pretty comfortable with what we we're going to go do. And he knew my objective as far as my square goes, where we're going to contain it. Yeah, I think zones. your intent was, uh, you know, communicated 
adequately, we were going to get down the bottom, keep it out of the subdivision, keep it from going east of the ridge, and uh, work our way around the flanks. Uh, I was a little concerned that we didn't have enough people, and then, and then as we saw later, that kind of bore out as we started getting some problems, getting line established with the fire moving on us. Right. Deb, anything? I thought you did a good job. I, um, your tactics were based on expected fire weather and, um, and also the priority of protecting the houses. You did a good job at making sure that we knew where our safety zones were and what was expected of us and what our communications were. You went through the LCES. Any comments from over here? No, I thought it was a good, uh, I thought it was a good scenario. I mean, uh, your, your outlined the objectives, you used a nice briefing, uh, the tactics were solid. Uh, I guess if there's anything, um, maybe it would be uh, find out from dispatch uh, what the capability, the resources that were there would be and how we're going to utilize them in the, in the uh, subdivision. Right, I could have probably got the quals of everybody before they were actually on. Yeah, or, or just maybe a, a plan that, it'd be nice for me to know, as one of the firefighters on the fire, what the plan was for the subdivision, other than just go over there and look around, uh, pump for the information to come back maybe, I don't know, it affects, us what, affects what's going to happen on the main fire, uh, what we're doing there, what's going to happen in the subdivision, but right. again, uh, Really, that's a small point. I thought it was a good job. You know, with that, um, I thought that in her intent, there was a contingency plan. A couple of things, you know, number one, she sent um, an individual down into the housing area to assess that. So I'm immediately thinking, well, she's got a bigger picture in mind, you know, by sending a person down there. Good point. You also, also, um, you could see that she knew what was going to happen with the weather, um, that there was going to be a wind shift, and consequently, your tactics, as expressed through your intent, kind of laid out where you wanted us to start and how you wanted us to proceed around this fire. Um, so it's interesting that you can see how uh, contingency planning is buried in her intent. Um, you can dig that out of the intent, I guess. So just to give an overview, what was planned was we were going to, we landed on top, we hiked down to the bottom, we were going to keep it out of the subdivision um, on the west side of the ridge and worry about this side later, preferably keep it south of there, but mainly we were just concerned about the subdivision. And then we set Deb in to triage the subdivision, waiting the engines to come. Everybody knew that was going on. What actually happened was we just focused on the right flank and then the helicopter came in with our other crew members and we did a transition in there. We, we did, what I didn't see happening, and I should have, was the bridge over there and the volunteer fire department not being able to get over. And I felt like I was focusing more of my concentration on the fire and not really I didn't call Deb, Deb called me, and I should have focused on that a little bit more um, and tied in with the engines somehow to figure, see for myself what is going on for this, with the subdivision. Yeah, I, thought, I thought that was a good move though to use the volunteer engine as a water tender rather than just have them sit there and watch. So at least they were busy doing something and actually serving a purpose. Okay, I'm going to reveal the training objective to you guys now. And it states that given the following scenario, players should establish command and communicate their intent to all resources. This can be used as a drill to discuss standard firefighting order number eight and the IRPG reference communication responsibilities. Players should verbally communicate their decisions to the appropriate individuals. I think that uh, we achieved all of those learning objectives nicely. You definitely communicated your intent to all your resources and I think that we discussed standard firefighting order number eight that uh, your orders were clear and you made sure they were understood and uh, you also 
covered the communication responsibilities as they're outlined in the IRPG. Thanks. Thanks.